What is up, Dom and Nerds? We're here for episode, big episode, 4-0, episode 40, 40 fucking episodes of Dom and Nerds. This so excited. Epic. My name is Rod. It is August 25th, Tuesday, 622, 13th year of Sander here in sunny Vancouver. And I'm joined, as always, with my co-host, my good buddy over in Japan, MJ. What's going on, MJ? Dude, so happy that everyone's joining us for episode 4-0. It's going to be a good one. It's, it's as every episode is a good one, but this one especially <laughs> because of our guest for this mm-hmm. episode. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's really fun to dive into Kendama talks all the time, and this time we're going to be not only talking about Dama, but a different realm, someone being introduced into it from a different avenue that is kind of, you know, touching on the same category of uh, this outsider sport, you know, it's kind of extreme sport that maybe Kendama can turn out to be in the future, who knows, 20, 10, 20 years yeah. later. <laughs> but yeah. today, yeah. everyone, we have Reed Stark on Dama Nerds. Reed, hey. thank you so much for coming. And Yo, joining us today, the giraffe man himself. Good. Thank you guys so much the for giraffe inviting me. Cometh. Mr. Hell yeah, man. Giraffic it's a pleasure to have you. is here. <laughs> Giraffic. Yes. So, dude, thanks for coming. It's going to be, uh, uh, I'm really excited for this one just because of your stance in Kendama, your stance in other places, you know, of course, BMX being the main one, but we're going to dive into it and figure out a little bit more of the background. And, uh, of course, we'll touch upon some, some uh, current events as well. Hell yeah. One more? Sounds good. Yeah. yeah. Stoked to be here. <laughs> yeah. Hells yeah. Hells yeah. So <laughs> it's not a Domino's episode. It's crazy. I'm like, I'm getting to like full Domino mode now. It's like BMX is in my past. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, may be, I might I mean, be more Domino than BMX at this point. Uh, no. Come on. Because you started, That's, how you've been BMXing for what, 12 years? Um, hmm. 18. 18? I was way off, dude. Come on. 18 years? 18. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that's got to be a big part of you. Because yeah, It is, today, for sure. What was the percentage of today's BMX riding versus Ken Dama playing? Hmm. Well, today I actually just golfed. I just golfed. Okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> golf and work, but Looking I worked for a new sponsorship. Stuff, so. What was that? Looking for a new sponsorship. Oh, man. Taylor, man, give me a... I mean, <laughs> Taylor. Um... But yeah, no, I went and golf with uh, some of my dad's buddies. It's good. Um, Hell yeah. Just did some work, did some Dama work, and yeah, some van moves as well. I bought a van recently, so oh, just nice. like kind of every single day, you have to be like, I, I have like some buddies in town who know a lot more than I do. I'm just kind of a noob with all this shit. Like you know, even anything with a car, I don't know. So I've just been learning <laughs> as much as I can, soaking it up like a sponge. But yeah, I kind of have to do lists with a lot of different people in a lot of different parts of the van right now. So oh, yeah. checking that out. And, nice. Yeah. So you're gonna you're gonna start your van life. Yeah, Vlogs, man. I hashtag mean, van life. Dude, I've had the tattoo forever. It's crazy. So like you this is my van? first tattoo, actually. Okay, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's I just a it, van on your bicep. It, um, dude, is that van headed for a ramp? Oh yeah. So that's is like that a ramp? That's the <laughs> new addition. Wait, let's see if we can so we got the van heading for a kicker, and then there we got a ring of fire. Oh shit! You're about to, so. So is this this new van that you got? Is it capable of hitting a kicker and flying through a ring of fire? Probably. <laughs> I will say you know it, it's actually the same van that's on my arm, which is crazy. So I oh, like. Shit. I woke up one morning in Minnesota, and my catalytic converter, which is like a part of your exhaust, got cut. So people go underneath it and they slice it up because I think the metals underneath it are like very valuable right now. You know they change value. Also, the catalytic converter itself is like. 150 bucks or something like that. If you trade it into a shop and shops take them or junk or whoever the fuck. So someone just um, crawled into your van and sliced it out. Probably. They they that's fucking greasy. crazy. They had to have jacked it for a, a little bit unless the car is like high up. Cause no, it, I mean, it was no, it might get some I, had a, I had a CRV and the CRV is actually, I think that's why they actually did it. Um, uh, because it is pretty easy to get under. And my buddy looked it up and there's this tool that you use and fucking t- t- we're I shouldn't even be talking about some giving Dude. people ideas out there, but <laughs> no, yeah, pretty much, bad, bad ideas. It's been, it's been a ter- it pretty much totals the car. Like you start it and it goes, vroom, like it's super I did it and turn, and turn it off and like look behind me, like thought like a truck was going to hit me like a semi or some shit. 
And then I did it again and was like, okay, my car's fucked. And I looked under it and saw these clear cut marks and was like, no fucking way. And it was like 1500, 12 or 1500 to fix. And my car was worth a hundred dollars at that time. <laughs> The day before I'd actually been, I actually spent it looking at vans to live in. Like I was like, oh, just clown with my parents. I was like, dude, I'm going to blow Dodge. Like I'm going to go live in a van. And we called my dad's buddy, Jeff and fucking talked with him for like hours going through all the RV to van to whatever possibilities that I, I could live in with my budget, with everything. Eventually we landed on the Ford E350 Econoline. Nice. Fucking Ford, super duty, 15 passenger van, like a transit van. Um, Holy good man. shit. 15 and, people. And, and this is before my catalytic converter got cut. This is a day before. I parked it at my folks' place, went home because I was too drunk to drive. I was like, fuck it. Um, then, like, pedal back in the morning, try and start the thing, and boom, it's fucked. So I, I'm like, holy Damn. shit, like, this is actually a real thing now. And I FaceTime my buddy Denim, uh, who's like a car dude. He's just like one of my car homies who was like, who I figured would probably have some insight on yeah. whether yeah. I could get the van or not. I'm like, dude, should I buy this van? Like, I looked it up yesterday. My car's fucked. Like I got to do something. And he's like on FaceTime. He goes, you want to buy this one? And pans over. And he like just had put his own, this exact van. He's like, it's the one you have on your arm. He was at the party five years ago that I got the tattoo. And he's, <laughs> it was his work van. He was just selling it. Someone was going to buy it for 55 and he fucking offered it up for five. And that day I bought a flight to Texas, flew out the next morning, stayed there for two days and then drove back. Oh shit. Whoa. And then, and then I've had my, uh, like this apartment I've been living in. Cause I was going to be traveling in Europe all, all summer. I had like flight spot and everything to be in Germany and wherever for like four months, three, four months. Um, and go to all these different countries and fucking go to events like BMX contests and shit. And it yeah. all got canceled and I was in Minnesota for the winter and I was like, fuck, what do I do? So I just like went on Airbnb, talked to a dude was like, yo, I want to just stay for months on end, you know, like, can we book this off? Like I'm kind of stuck here. And he was like bet. And he's this dude, Craig, he's the best dude ever. Like 68 year old dude or 69. Like he was just body surfing in Spain, like with his girlfriend. <laughs> Fuck it. He rides like 17 <laughs> miles a day on his bike. Like damn. In, in this place is like a hippie bungalow. He's like, all right, just come here to fucking kick back, get away from the girlfriend and blah, blah, blah. Like just <laughs> and he's got like an organic <laughs> tomato garden in the back and like a Japanese oh, cart in the front. I don't know. Sick. That's tight. But, so he like, let me stay for like, as long as I wanted month to month. And then, yeah, just like, as soon as I got the van, I was like, bet Craig put in my month's notice. And I pretty much had six weeks to build this fucker out and hit the road. So shit. It's kind of a long story, but damn, no, that's great. It's a good story. Though. That's big, tight. Big it's the, the beginning life. of a new adventure, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, game changer for sure. Like, hell yeah. Well, once they open those borders and shit gets figured out, you know, you have to bring that thing up to Vancouver, buddy. I was already thinking about it, bro. Ooh, I, I, yeah. My plan is to go. I got uh, my buddy Maloof coming out and we're filming like a 10 year safari video type of thing. Um, oh shit. I'm not going to say all the, all the creative bits with it, but <laughs> yeah, it's going to, it's going to be a sick one. You know, it's this dude who's been filming all my videos and got me sponsored for the first time by BSD. He's like, nice videos and we're going to go. Is, and- is he the one I got in? Is he the one that filmed you run like riding with the fucking herd of giraffes? No, that's Antoine Sabron. That's that's my homie oh, in France. He's oh, a fucking damn. he's a legend too. Um, he's he's filmed some of the like more of the overseas videos. But this dude Tony Maloof is like he grew up in Chicago, Peoria actually, and um, yeah, he actually jams Dama, dude. He came to Nako. He Hell came yeah. to Nako. He was on filming Adam for the for the no jumper shit. Oh yeah, I think I, I talked to him briefly, maybe. Yeah, so I he's was, yeah, I hung out with those guys for a bit. So yeah, he jams down. My, he's coming up, and we're just gonna hot, like he's ready to fucking send for like a month or two. And then my buddy Denim, he's also on BSD, and I was like, he's the one who sold me the van. And I was like, dude, you want to come on a fucking the first road trip? Might be a month, wherever. I'll drop you off in California eventually. And he's like, all right, let's do it. So now he's, yeah. he's like fucking supporting us, and we're just gonna send it all the way through That's America. Fucking sick, man! Hell yeah! There you go. You got a nice. Uh, little detour going up to Vancouver, hanging out with the terror squad. Hopefully. <laughs> right. Right. After California, dude, I'll just keep swooping up. I definitely got to go to Oregon, visit my aunt and fucking cousin and shit. Um, oh yeah. Popping up from there. So if two of you three guys are Dama players, are you going to be trying to hit up some Dama shit along the way too? Like Dama players and stuff. Of course oh, the homies. The third like, dude jams Dama too. The third dude can whirlwind. 
Oh, Damn there you can go. Fuck whirlwind, bro. Like, there you go. Dude, all my that's, friends, that's, all my friends can run the world. Damn, that's dude. a Dama song. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> Most of them, at least, you know, especially if they spend enough time with me. They, they jam, and you know? So, yeah. I think the thing about, like, like being a Kendama player, like calling someone a Kendama player, I don't think it really matters about your skill level. You know what I mean? Like, I think that if you're into it and you fucking try on a regular basis, you're a Kendama player. I don't care if you can't big cup. If you're into it, you're a Kendama player. Dude, that's the love that I've felt like with Kendama. Like no matter how good anyone is at any event, every single person will come up to you and be like, yo, like, what are you working on? Can I, you yeah. know I mean? Oh, you should try this. You should try this. Everyone totally. just wants everyone to get better at this thing. It's like, yeah, and that's the same thing with BMX, you know, everyone's rooting each other on and just trying to fucking, you know, push everyone forward and keep growing, mm-hmm. you know? And I felt the same thing with Kendama, which was crazy. Like finding all the fucking parallels with it. Um, and yeah, man, it's, it's fucking sick. But yeah, I mean, that's that, what you just said there is like why I like got sp- sponsored by sweets, you know, why I got mm-hmm. like a pro mod, you know, like, yeah. Um, Cause it's really not about how good you are. I mean, it's amazing to see how good you can get individually, oh, totally. but Basing the whole entire Kendama industry off of just uh, who's the best, not yeah, like still who alone. really loves it. You know what I mean? Like, so, like what if what if people were sponsored by love? That's how it is in BMX. Some of the BMX riders who are big pros are not the fucking best in the world by any means. They can't do the most tricks, uh, yeah. but they have love and and they yeah, put that love into the game too. Right? Yeah, and they and they do everything they can to support it and grow the industry mm-hmm. they love and because of that companies are putting dollars behind them. They're sending them on trips, you know. And yeah. that that's some shit that like I mean Kanama's in such an early stage as an industry and so is BMX, but Kanama's I'm not newer, but I guess in this new realm, you know, yeah. like I I mean I would say shit, I've been playing for like 4 or 5 years, maybe 5 years now. Um Yeah. And I've seen it change drastically. I mean, who's at events, who are yeah. posting videos, like you mm-hmm. can just, it's, it's a, it's a flourishing, it's a flourishing movement almost, you know? Basically. Yeah. It's a good way to put it actually. So with how, with how young it is, there's only room for growth. Mm-hmm. So I think everyone jumping on it is, you know, uh, uh, it just shows how much, well, how welcoming the community is and the people around them, you know, everyone always wants someone to play with. So of course, like if you have a friend that has, you know, is playing Kenjama, they're always going to offer like, Hey dude, fucking try this shit out. It's pretty fun. And then they yeah. get in it. It's like, all right, you're a sweet fucking converted one person. <laughs> Let's fucking keep this ball rolling and try to create more of a, a group or a, like a team or something, dude. Oh man. It's, it's just an ever growing thing. But Reed, you touched upon some stuff. You touched upon so much stuff that we wanted to talk with you about. And one <laughs> one major reason why, you know, me and Rod have a huge list of guests and why your name like kind of stuck out during uh, this, this certain time. So it, I guess a few, some time has passed. And by the time this episode gets out, a little more time is going to pass as well. But you've been on the Sweets team for a while. Yeah, and, you know, some people are all about like figuring out the category, the category for different things, flow team, pro team, uh, legend, and then you, yeah. like ambassadors. So yeah. put it out there, Reed, what are you on the sweets team? I'm a member of the sweets mob. Sweets mob. There you go. Everybody. I like that. M-O-B <laughs> mob. Then, so a few, a few months ago, <laughs> when was this? When was this? Actually. July 26th, I think was the official announcement that I see on Instagram. We had, you guys had three additions to the team. Emily, Lauren, and Chuck now were a part of Suites. There was a, a big announcement and stuff during, I think, uh, what was it? The, uh, the, the, some online competition that they had? Oh, uh, the SKO? Yes. SKO. Oh, someone's busy. My bad. Pop, you good. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> someone's <open>. busy. <laughs> graphic designer calling up. Shout out Matt Maroka. He, he uh, oh shit. Hell yeah. Much More, love to Maroka. Dude, I guess you are going full Dama soon, Reed. It's like just surrounding your life. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying, bro. I mean, Maroka's one of my best friends anyways, but no. I'm... <laughs> but so, yeah, so get, getting back to this hot topic, because in the community, there were so many people that were not so stoked that these girls were announced to be on the sweets team or sponsored by sweets i'm sure you know about it i'm sure you know you guys the sweets team has a pretty tight 
uh, meetings every once in a while. You talk amongst each other. And I'm sure this came up. And it's like, there was, of course, so many, both sides talking about it of like, they you got to be like a certain skill level to be sponsored. And then, right, like you were saying, Rob, you don't need to be sponsored exactly just because of your skill level. And then Reed, you follow yeah. up with even the people in BMX, big names aren't the technically the best, but mm -hmm. there's something about them, either the passion that they have, uh, the passion that they have when they're playing whatever said sport or the passion within the community and, mm -hmm. you know, projecting that and having everyone just feel good and positive. That's like, that's yeah. what everyone wants. That's what everyone strives for. Mm -hmm. So to have these people, to have these, these three girls come on the team, of course, like it should just be like, you would think, cause everyone in the Kadama community is like, yeah, we all love and welcome open arms. And then this shit happens. It's like, yo, what the fuck? And that, and that <laughs> opened, yo, Pandora's box, opened up that can of fucking dirty ass worms yeah. to see like who the weasels are in the community or maybe maybe just not thinking in the positive a better positive mm. way about the well, whole situation well, i i mean i believe before it goes on i mean the community that we know you know like my first mko versus where it is now this community that we know and love just so everyone knows who's watching this it's a lot fucking bigger now Okay. So <laughs> there are people who've never been to a Kendama event. They might be able yeah. to whirlwind, but they don't even know anyone who jams Dama. They're the they first might be able to triple in their whirlwind. scene who found it online True. through someone and bought it and they got all their friends on it. And now they all play, but they don't know shit. They don't know that when you go to an event and you put your wallet down, you can leave it all day and no one will fucking touch it. Yeah. They don't know that shit. It's like Japan vibes with that shit. Like yeah. Kendama yeah. is crazy. <laughs> the community is so tight knit and so strong. Straight up. I think it's because people fucking, you know, you, you're, you're connected to how hard you worked at this task, you know, this, uh, tool, this toy, whatever you want to call it, you know, um, mm -hmm. I hate to call it a toy, but I mean, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with playing with toys, man. You it's super call fun, it a toy. Man. You know, BMX bike is a toy too. Fuck it. Yeah. That's what I was uh, saying. But yeah, I mean, I see it more as a paintbrush. Fuck it. Uh, Beautiful. But yeah, like. <laughs> oh man, pain pressure got me distracted. I was like, that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was a good one. That got me distracted, man. That was, like, oh, that was. Can we just stop right there? Just you know, that was a good one. <laughs> Kendama is a paintbrush. <laughs> um, but no, we were talking about like those those three girls that got added to the team. Okay, so typically in that whole situation. So yeah, I mean, back to that. That's definitely a a longer one through what the hell I was just talking about, but. um yeah. When you when you're like a BMX fan or something, you want to pluck people who are like growing fast, who are like in the beginning of their journey and they're growing fast and they're not cocky and they're not fucking expecting shit and they don't have any negative vibes. They just really love BMX, right? Yeah. So then we see these <laughs> girls and just you know, they've been playing for about a year. I've been playing for five years. One of the I forgot which one, someone earlier today posted a fucking triple triple inward handle stall flip that's okay. like I, I don't think i've ever done that i've, been I've never done handle. i've yeah. never done i haven't done a single handle stall flip i've tried them many time i haven't done it. i'm right there that's, that's a new learn it's right around it's right around the corner but Hell yeah you got it buddy they landed this shit. i mean they're they did triple runs like one two three whirlwind and shit like yeah. they're leveling up like since sweets has like supported them and put fucking you know because guess what they are steezy and they are fucking inviting and inclusive and fucking awesome. You know, like yeah. I, before they were sponsored by Sweets, I saw these girls popping up and I was like, damn, Boogie T's reposting them. Fucking like they're just all of a sudden in the in the Instagram fucking yeah, film. And I'm like, damn, who yeah, are these yeah. chicks? Like they fucking kill it, you know? And it was like actually those three girls. And um, and then yeah, I mean, fucking Sweets swooped them up. And Bravo, I was not a really a part of that decision, you know. Like Matt yeah. Sweets mm -hmm. himself manages the pro team. I know that they are all very connected and I, you know, I wouldn't say I'm as big of a part of any decision-making. I was told about it and I was like, yeah, they're fucking awesome. And they're oh, yeah. really good, really quick. Um, that being said, does anyone else not deserve it? No, but. Well, that's like we, what you were saying, man. Like the community these days is grown so much. It's so much bigger than it used to be where like it already at the, in the old days, it was already at the point where like, you just can't sponsor every player dude, you, because you there's can't. just too many people. You dude, know? This, like, and there's yeah. so many fucking, and that's the thing with BMX, man. You know how many fucking people are like, yo, 
I like, how do I get sponsored? Like, Oh, like I want to be pro. I want to be pro like you. I want to be sponsored like you. Like, yo motherfucker. It's not that great. It's not that tight. Like you get free shit. You kind of get like blown out on some shit. You like stop loving some shit. Maybe you'll refine your love. A lot of people get burnt the fuck out on something that they go pro in. you know, like, yeah, shit kind of sucks, you know, like why the fuck don't you just focus on loving it and just having fun, you know? Yeah. And that's what these girls did. They're like, really just had fun. And you could see that shit in every fucking clip. Same thing as fucking Yui in Japan. Same thing as fucking Mm -hmm. um, Misu too, you know? Like when they land shit, they're like, yeah, they're the best people to sponsor. They got a host. They're not, they're not taking life seriously. Like, I I mean, for me coming from a marketing background, I'm not going to sponsor anyone who's taking life seriously. You know, if someone, if you're like so focused on this and you don't want to just have fun and fucking enjoy and be able to hang out with people, like, I'm just not going to consider you. It doesn't matter how fucking good you are. Like, totally. if you can't hop in the van and hang out with eight of the team members and catch a vibe and be chilling, then you're just not going to make the cut, you know? It's just not going to work. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's personal skills. It's fucking, it's not just one thing. It's everything, you know? 100%. And, and, and these that girls, like... These girls, I mean, I haven't even thought about this much. You know what I mean? It's crazy mm-hmm. to like, I'm thinking on the fly here about this. I mean, I, oh, it's it seems so natural because I guess it was like, if you would view it like that, it was kind of like me, you know, coming in when mm-hmm. I'm not that good at Kendama and now people have seen my progression with it, you know? Yeah, totally. You're like maybe a good example of that, but you didn't catch the same flack, of course, when you started. Are you right, fucking but- kidding me? I got so many DMs. Like, why the fuck are you getting a Dama before this person? Why are oh, you? Did shit? you really? Oh, oh you dude, did. you did. I catch fucking the went flag. through oh, the finger, dude, for years, years, dude. Damn. Ever since I started posting, and not even just from Kendown people, less Kendown people than BMX people, being like, "Yo, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why are you playing with this stupid ass toy?" And I was like, "Fuck you, fam. Like, you don't know. What? Just wait till you start playing, dude." I dealt with like, <laughs> it's. I, I've talked about this shit and teared up many a time like gabe knows fucking these dudes know man i there's dms upon dms upon dms of people just clowning on me people have told me that i like didn't get bmx sponsorships and shit because i fucked with kendama so hard and people were like what's this weird thing and i was like fuck that kendama is the best thing in the world every house should have one and like mm-hmm. i fucking yeah dude I, I put up with it so people like boo johnson and fucking boogie t don't have to put up with it but yeah, there was hell yeah, black from the fucking Kendama community too, man. People just like, why is this dude like pro? Because we yeah. didn't have that like distinction. We did, I wasn't part right. of the mob, then, you know. Yeah, I had to yeah, create I that so it, future right. people wouldn't get fucking berated for fucking you know getting dude, involved with it. I was I'm, I I had no yeah. idea about that. Actually, dude, neither. Well, to be well, honest, if, bombs, bro, if I was in if I was in BMX, dude, if I was in BMX and I was a flow on a team, you know what I mean? Come like I was amateur on a team, or if I like wanted to get sponsored. And I see one of the biggest companies in BMX fucking give like a musician a bike frame or something yeah. like that. Maybe someone who can do like a 180 or a 360 and they, you're giving them a bike frame. And it's like, yo, motherfucker, I've been like killing myself for 14 years. Mm. Why am I not getting this spot? You know, because there's only so many spots. And like, yeah, like we were well, I saying, feel man. it. I, and I felt everything, man. Trust me. And I stuck with it. I stuck to my guns. I fucking. Cause I love this fucking thing so much. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like, well, like the thing about that too, is it's not like it's only your choice. Like you were just someone who is just passionate about this. Like, you know, like ultimately sweets is the one who offered you that spot and saw the potential within you. Well, like it wasn't, it, a, it wasn't a spot cause it was a new thing, you right. know, yeah, like, it, yeah, it, was, totally it was blended initially. It was blended. We didn't, how could you foresee that it was going to be taken like that? You know, like, yeah, I totally. Yeah. Point. But like, I would in the either, future, yeah. it'd be like, yo, this isn't a pro series Dama. This is more like an artist collab. This right, is like yeah. had at the time. Yeah, this yeah. is more of a Luzumaki than a fucking Nick Gallagher pro model. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. Totally. And like, I think initially it got taken like the Reed Star Safari mod is like a Nick Gallagher mod. And it's like, yo, motherfucker, like I'm learning whirlwinds. Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm trying to grind and do this shit and grow. But I think, I think that's the coolest thing that sweets did with that move was value both sides of the industry because 100%. If you only isolate and value the top. It's just going to demotivate people. Like mm-hmm. people need, not everyone's going to be pro. Not everyone has to be pro. People yeah, should be no. reminded that they can just fucking go. They can jam when they do their laundry and love it. They can jam yeah. when they go to the beach and love it. They don't need yeah. to fucking post clips. If they post clips, great. And I mean, it's you will be involved in an amazing community if you do, but really just enjoy Dama for what it is, you know? Like, don't yeah, stress yourself out about being trying to be pro, trying to fucking 
get sponsored. Just have fun and do yourself and you will get noticed if you're fucking, if you're doing it right. You know, if you have the heart for totally. it, dude, that, there you go. It goes out to everyone who leaves comments on like crazy banger tricks on Instagram that just leave comments like, I quit. Why am I even trying frowny face, cry face? Like <laughs> For guys, real though. Yeah. It's not about oh, being the best that we've just been going on. Yeah, man. Like, and that's like something that like we've already, we've already touched on this, but like just something that people always miss, man. Everybody focuses reiterate, on yeah. like, you got to fucking be doing these new tricks. You got to be hitting 15 tap fucking Quint whirlwind and shit. And you know, like, it's, and it's like, like grind that. But it's, it's like, dude, like yeah. what you really got to do is just take a step back and look at that Ken Dom and be like, yo, this is why I fuck with you is because I fucking do that. And, you know, and then you fucking go play it and you get that feeling. You're like, yes, okay, that's what I wanted. You know, it's yeah. like, are you really trying to get Instagram followers or are you trying to fucking get right, right, right. Kendama joy, you know, <laughs> like. Exactly. Yeah. And when the, the coolest thing that I've thought about, Morocco was talking about this, the homie you just called Sweet mm-hmm. Friend Designer. Um, He's always talked about how, like, he's like, look at the pro team. Like, we had, like, Sweet's pro team, the actual Kanama pro team, we have a lot of obvious fucking best players in the world. You know what I mean? But we yeah. also have some people who are, like, super creative and steezy and very good at other things, not just Kanama. You know, they're, like, think about a George Marshall, you know? Like, he's, like, mm. went to college, like, had Dom along with him the whole time, and yeah. now he's out of college, and he has this whole fucking world to enter into with a huge skill, you know? Totally. And, that, that, and that's like kind of like a not a mistake, but it's it's some shit that happens in BMX where people drop out of high school to fucking ride BMX because they want to wow. become. And it's like, yo, like because they want to spend time in it and they love it and it makes sense. And some people do that and be are the best riders in the world for real. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of a lot of the best riders in the world dropped out of high school at fucking 15, 16 and just rode and were like winning contests and shit. Yeah. But like Damn. for the vast majority, it's just not going to happen. You know, like you should just like find something else you love and also have Dama. Like I've always believed that everyone should have more than one hustle, you know, like fucking if you love Dama, great. Find, find what else you love. Do them yeah. all. Do them exactly. all. The time. Yeah, I exactly. like, it's all about so balance. Things, dude. I, I could never be bored, you know? Um, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> dude yeah yeah that's definitely something that I, a lot of people uh i think struggle with and there's a lot of uh, different advice out there i know like personally like i have a creative mind i wanted i you know i grew up skateboarding i got into like music playing the guitar playing in bands and shit and then like i also had an artistic background so getting into art and then kendama it's like blending all these things some people say you should focus on one because and like really strengthen your strengths or your your good like points master it and yeah. master it instead of doing everything and kind of being mediocre at it but then i think for a lot of people that just it fucking tires you out and it's like having that brain focus on one thing is just like it, it's it's not fun it, the fun is lost because it, it's because it's your because you have all your eggs in one basket man and like yeah when that happens like i mean fuck like come on man you're trying to make dama a job like there's only so many companies and so many slots like that's you're trying to make a huge like, come on, dude, yeah. like with make one like come on egg. like yo for real focus real hard on something that's like actually attainable and people need a shitload of like if you think you got a marketing brain Go to that fucking school. I did that shit. I'll be able to get a job anywhere forever because of like the marketing mindset and how you can help different companies. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like there's there's tons of different things. Find what you love, you know. Ask the classic Alan Watts question, you know, like what would you do if you had fucking a million dollars, you know, or endless money? What would you do? You know, like what would you actually do after you flew around the world and fucking skydived and golfed every day for three years and fucking <laughs> did whatever you wanted to do? Bought all your toys best and shit all ever. that shit. Yeah. What would you do at the end of that when you still had unlimited money? And if you think about what the fuck you want to do with that, which like for me kind of came back to like Dama, which was crazy, which is why I'm fucking so connected with sweets now. And yeah, I don't know. Like, but Dama, not in being a pro Dama player. Yeah. I'm trying to grow Dama. I'm trying to make the pie fucking huge. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. everyone can fucking work off this shit, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that Dama could change the world, but but that's a different goal than trying to be a professional in some shit. Like trying to be a pro athlete, you try and be a fucking pro soccer player your whole life. Come on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. come on, man. Like you better have something else kind of going like maybe 70% of this, 
30 into this, maybe over yeah. time you're like 40%, 60%, you know, like to really mm-hmm. learn this shit, you know, let's do soccer 40% of the time, like totally. you know, know your levels to the shit. And yeah, uh, man, I think, I think a big part of life and even all of these things that you're talking about too, is like balance, you know, like, like you're saying all your eggs into one basket makes that side too heavy. And now all of a sudden you're falling over eventually, no matter how hard you try to hold that other side up. Right. And like, that's also, I think a big part of why a lot of these like pro people or like not even pros, but just people who are like, like big names or like big people that you just, everybody knows and loves are people who are very like eclectic and have like very crazy interests outside of whatever they're famous for, for lack of a better term or whatever, you know, it's like, like, like you're an example of someone who like you're known for BMX mostly, but you're also known for Kendama. You're also known for like Safari state. You're also known for other things. Right. So it's like, I think that's kind of like what makes like ultimately like a character, which is like a big part of someone that like you're saying who, if you're trying to be sponsored, if you're trying to like get on a team, like you're fucking gromming out, you're going too hard. Like that's not what it's about. Right. You got to fucking work on yourself before people will look at you in some kind of light where you can help other people. Right. Yeah. 1000% brother. 1000%. Yeah. Totally. And I like, fucking... I like those differences to make you stand out. Cause if everyone's just doing the same, like, juggle tap juggle fucking shit then Mm. it just gets looked over yeah Yeah, man man. fucking be unique be original fucking figure out what you can master you know yeah be yourself know 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 about a lot of shit you know be able to fucking be in any room and be able to talk with anyone about anything you know what i mean fucking read I i don't even read I just fucking have great conversations with great people but some people might not have that many people in their lives that they can talk to you know but I don't know. It's fucking, it's, 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 there's a lot of shit you can do in this life, man. And fucking making your goal set to be a pro rider or a pro skater or a pro BMXer and yeah. put all your chips in that basket. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Come on. Not, not the best move. Uh, not the best move. Man, the, bi- the biggest thing I could say on that note would be that like the biggest thing I've learned being like, I'm 33 this year, I'm not that old, but you know, older than maybe a lot of the people listening to this. You're you know, 33? I, yeah, buddy. No way! My, my birthday a couple weeks ago. I'm 33 years. No, old. you timeless, baby. That's crazy. <laughs> you like fucking 28, my mind, dog. That's yeah. <laughs> but like in all of that time, like the biggest thing I would say that I've always learned is that no matter how much you plan, no matter how much you try to make something happen, life has other plans, and you got to be fucking yeah. open to those plans. Like, don't put your fucking eggs all in one basket, like what you're saying, right? Because then you fucking oh shit, this changed. And now it's like, well, now that basket is gone. Where are your eggs? They're fucking omelets, motherfucker. Like for real, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Dude, expect some trouble. Fucking be able to tolerate some ambiguity. Yeah. Send there you go. <laughs> there you go. There you Hell go, yeah. everyone. There's a lot of deep talks, good uh, information, good uh, advice put out there. Just fucking be passionate. Open be your yourself. mind. Be yourself and fucking unapologetically enjoy. yourself. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, there, there's this fucking George Clinton song I've been listening to. Fuck, what is it called? I'm gonna look it up quick. God, everyone <laughs> should listen to this shit. Oh P-fun. man. Where we, what? Where Butcher Man? No, it's like a whole it's a whole song with like a it's like a monologue type of thing. Okay. Talks about some really crazy shit and it was kind of life changing for me recently. Oh damn. Yeah, like like, like life changing enough cool. to where I'm gonna take up this much time to fucking try and find it. Yeah. Well, you'll have to <laughs> you'll have to get it to us for sure. We can use it as the jam track on the episode. Ooh. Wow. So yeah. everybody can hear it. Yes. You're worried about it getting fucking flagged or nothing. Let's go. But yeah, I like how you you uh have that like mindset is is really strong with you, Reed. Because I, I did just watch the BSD video, Safari video that you released. Was it just last month? And yeah. That, that Wait, whole, which one? That whole intro monologue uh, with the the cheetah with one eye. Oh no, that was like two years ago. Oh fuck! That what just got posted post? on IGTV. Like, oh okay, okay, so that's why it looks like it just happened. But yeah, yeah. so the whole intro monologue is just like you were saying that that quote of what would you do if money had no value? Like what would you, you that, that was an Alan, that was an Alan Watts piece. Dude, I'm fucking going through some, cra- dude, I'm 27, bro. I'm like going through some crazy changes in life, bro. Like the whole just, world is 
Yeah, exactly. Everyone is all the time, but just, I mean, I think now at, I don't know if it's this age or my experience or whatever, but I feel like I'm like able to articulate shit better and kind of see where I'm going. And I have a better understanding of like what I think, you know, what I should be doing or what I, you know, the path that I should be on, even though yeah. I've had it before, but the path before was kind of just like, Little bit local, you know. A little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just send it. Don't. Yeah, a little bit crazy. It later. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, you know. So I'm kind of holding in, dude. Like, so yeah, I don't know. It's like good to just talk. I didn't shit. I mean, last time we talked, man, we got on some similar vibes. Like y'all are fucking. Oh, yeah, y'all get it, you know. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, of course we, we we go chat. We go chat about some shit. Of course, <laughs> exactly. self growth, some fucking, you know. And that, there you go. It's not even Dama, man. Fucking yeah. self growth, even though that happens through Dama. Yeah. Like one of the yeah. perks for sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you were mentioning uh, you with your marketing background, you went to school and stuff. I did read that you started an ad agency. This is your own company. Yeah. That's um, I started read Stark ad like five years ago, four years ago, maybe four years ago, maybe longer. Um, yeah, I felt it was crazy. I, I graduated college and I was like traveling for a bit, just mobbing. As soon as I graduated, I was off. And yeah. all of a sudden, one of my old professors hits me up and he's like, yo, Reed, just want to let you know, like I bought your name.com the day you graduated. Whoa. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, you were like one of my only students that fucking I thought could like run an ad agency. I thought Reed Stark was a great name for it. Blah, blah, blah. Dude, so he like bought me that Reed shit. Stark. And I was like, he's like, I want to transfer it to your name. And I eventually like, we got transferred my name or no, he like gave me a job. I was doing like social media analysis work for like all these ATV brands and shit. It's crazy. He was hooking me up at like 75 an hour. You know, I did Whoa. work for like a month or two, you know, fresh out of college. I was like, what the fuck? Like I'm yeah. pretty fucking broke, you know? <laughs> um, and yeah, Not he's like, long I did all this work, man. put in all these reports, making graphs and shit. Like, you know, just my analysis on it. What I just, what I thought, you know, because right, and it's like your brain's trained through co- the college experience to do this shit. And that's like, that was crazy to get that trust right away. And I did that. And then eventually ended up like going off and traveling and meeting up with some people and having some more crazy ideas. And I came back to him one time. I was like, we got to have a meeting. And I met with him. I was like, bro, I want to do this, 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 this. Part of which was like a safari state concept, not that name, but hmm. what I wanted, to, what I still want to do with it. Um, And he was like, just heard him and was like, Bet. Well, you're going to need some money, man. Fucking how's 5k sound. I was like, what? And fucking, he just like, yeah, let's go to my apartment right now. Like go to his apartment. He writes me a check and he's like, dude, start. Th- that's when I started the LLC for wow. Reed Stark, Reed Stark ad LLC. That's when I got a full business banking account. Um, fucking the whole nine to like get certified to make money through my own shit, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. my own ideas type of thing. And it's kind of like a parent company, I guess. Cause now I definitely am like an independent contractor with different brands and shit right, that right, I right. work for and all funnels up into this one tax bracket type of thing. Mm. So yeah. So I fucking, yeah, did that. And yeah, I've had that ever since I've had a shitload of ideas, probably yeah. I've written business plans for like eight different, nine different ideas. Should I travel to the Philippines to find a fucking mango farm, find the best mangoes in the world. What? That's a fruit company. Fucking crazy shit i followed these plans <laughs> all the way to the point of like being like okay it's gonna cost this much to bring a container of fucking dried mangoes from the philippines to here <laughs> like i like got the owner of this city who's fucking gonna like pay off the fucking shipping people to make sure it gets out and doesn't get fucked with like crazy shit just all bmx connections and just fucking traveling and just being open to i don't know I was, I did some crazy fucking shit. I was homeless for like five years. So I like, I mobbed with my ideas and tried to pursue them. And eventually wow. every time when it got to the point of like doing it, I was like, well, if I do this, I'm going to have to focus hundred percent on this and not ride BMX. So I'm just not going to do this until I'm done riding BMX. Um, cause wow. there's a lifespan on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, um, so then I fucking, yeah. Like I've had all these ideas. I've gone crazy with them eventually now. Like, I mean, my first real gig i guess is sweet economics you know that's been my first mm. like you know doing marketing help with them and shit like that and yeah yeah nice so you bring something else to the table i did not know that yeah marketing shit and fucking um i helped with like their global sales channels and stuff like that yeah kind of just bring kanama to countries that have never had it and sweet and then you get to maybe get a free ticket to go to those countries 
I'm usually already there from being. I was going to say, oh, oh shit. I, oh, I got a time. I'm a fucking. I yeah, definitely, yeah. you got to double dip. This is this why you, you got to have all the hustles, dip. bro. <laughs> you got to double dip and fucking moose it around. Come on, man. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Use all I three sides that. of that fucking Doritos chip. Get all different sauces. Yeah, man. Get saying, all the sauce dog. you can get, bud. Dude, just to make shit happen, you know? Like, if you have dreams and they're going to fucking benefit people. And, like, everything I do is kind of, like, all funneled into one shit, you know? So it's like. Hmm. Everyone, everyone who I work with knows that if I'm out there, if I'm out traveling, I'm doing good work for all the shit, all my sponsors. That's yeah. when I'm riding every day, fucking grinding, doing shit. When I get like stuck in a place, I'm like more honed and working and not, not working in that realm, but, um, I guess I'm kind of boring. I'm not living a, bo- I'm not living a safari lifestyle. Like I can work and do everything on the road, but like when I get home, it's like super comforting to just be like, wow, I've been doing this crazy shit for this long the balance i've been yeah wilding for this long now i gotta really focus and hone in and chill and then fucking i'm trying to like once i get on the road with the van trying to find that perfect perfect balance of like getting out there making sure i'm productive with fucking bmx and kendama and everything you know my body Mm -hmm. my health um, yeah yeah then also being super productive with sweets yeah Mm mm-hmm and also finding that time to chill get that that downtime to rest and let your body heal and do all the shit it's supposed to do. Yeah, I don't do that much, man. I fucking yeah, we don't. None of us do it enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, <laughs> right? Especially with yeah, the, the whole BMX thing. Like we were talking before we were recording. When I was growing up, you know, skateboarding, rollerblading, people were getting into it. I was like, all right, and you, you pretty much you choose out of your group of friends. Like, oh, you're going to start BMXing, you're going to start skateboarding and shit. And everyone in my town was like, who were my friends trying to get into this extreme sport everyone was like yeah i don't know about that bmx jam uh, let's, uh. You know, we all had bikes we all like had mountain bikes that we would ride before getting into this extreme sport but everyone's like yeah, that just seems like you're really gonna fuck yourself like real yeah. good so everyone <laughs> stayed away from it except for one of my friends who was like i'm gonna do it and he would just you know hang out with us and just fucking send it off you know just staircases and shit loading docks but like that's all he was he was just doing that and and just having seeing him progress like trying to do like bunny hops and shit and like getting a little better but at the same time everyone including him was just like like this is a little too much there's plenty of shit when i was on my skateboard i was like yeah i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna fuck myself up so bad (laughs) no man on that note i know a guy that my favorite maybe BMX or pro like pro whatever BMX or that I know of that you've probably know of Sean Burns legend, bro. That guy's Burns a gnarly legend. motherfucker. There's like a quote from one of his videos. It's like a slow motion clip of this old woman going, Sean Burns is crazy. <laughs> and it like clips to that dude, like going off a roof into some janky ass, like fucking six inches wide fucking thing that he has to ride down. Like. Yeah. Uh, but that that guy, I saw he was like in the hospital. He like fucking, I don't even know what he did. Probably broke his back or something. And then within like a couple months, he was back jumping off roofs again and shit. He's that. I think he has a fund to donate to. He's like one of the gnarliest few extras ever. It's definitely mm-hmm. been in the game forever. Oh, um, that's right. He's still injured, isn't he? I'm yeah, he's still, he's still definitely definitely hurt. I think he still has a fund that people can donate to. So look up Sean Burns. Hit his yeah. Instagram. I'm sure he's got it up there. Shout out Sean Burns, man. Yeah, for Sorry. real. Sean Burns is a legend, dog. Mm-hmm. I haven't spent enough time with him. My, my buddy actually was riding street with him in his hometown. I think he's in Boston. I think that's where mm-hmm. he's from. And they're cruising through the streets and Burns is like, yeah, just train me. And my buddy's like cruising <laughs> behind him. And like, all of a sudden he's like jumping crazy shit. And at one point just like sends it, I think he sent it down like a 12 stair or some shit, like a 12 stair rail hop in the middle of like cruising, you know, like not something you just fucking do. Oh, yeah. Kind of like from town. <laughs> You at least like look at it first, right? Yeah. <laughs> and my buddy, my buddy like pedals up here and he's like, fuck that. Like, stop doing my homie bank and fucking, yeah, that was the end of that. But dude, I, I can only imagine, dude. Wow, boy. Really yeah. wow, man. It's Super, funny. like pretty much the embodiment of all that shit we were just talking about. Like, just yeah, fucking yeah, yeah. having the passion for it and just hucking yourself off shit. Like, right. No, yeah. worry about the outcome. That's it. That's super intense. But you've been in it for a long time, Reed. I know that you have like a few different uh, uh, signature parts, right? And I was actually surprised because I didn't know so much about how you could have specific parts, you know, because usually with 
skateboarding. You know, there's, you know, the deck, the wheels, maybe the trucks and stuff, and then cl- clothing, maybe sh- professional signature like shoes, shoes and, shit. and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was surprised that for, for BMX. Yeah, bikes like, got a lot more parts. <laughs> so many more parts, right? You, you get your own pedals, you got your own frame, you got your own just bars, handlebars and shit. Mm-hmm. And it was, it's cool to see how you could include your ideas to make it like your signature part. So Dama has been kind of weaving in and out of that for pro mods. Like, you know, sometimes it's just like whatever our main shape is. And then you just do the colorway. But then some companies are saying you get full range, you can do whatever you want. So is it always like that with you, Reed, and your, 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 signature parts for your bikes yeah I, it's crazy my fucking the owner of bsd is like uh he used to be a laser engineer man like a crazy Whoa. like wicked million dollar lasers i don't know what the fuck they did but he <laughs> yeah he, he knows a lot about design um and he wrote bmx forever too so grant smith he created bsd and he's been able to like unlike a lot of other brands they get hit with this book it's like here you can choose this far this far this far this far yeah yeah boom 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 put your brand here 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 sticker yeah, color, yeah. and probably fucking 80 to 90 percent of the brands that you see at bmx do that shit um whereas grant designs every angle and everything from scratch for every single part of the whole entire bike. So like the BSD bike, like we don't even sell complete. It's all aftermarket shit, but it all like works, fits together perfectly. It's like the simplest, strongest design because of his genius ass brain. But (laughs) with that, I've been able to do anything I wanted with parts and shit, you know, like they trust me. The the, probably the craziest one was my signature pedals. They like trusted me to do like this crazy pin design that had a lot more pins than any other plastic pedal available at the time. Um, hmm. and I like, they made a 3d print of it and shit. And it was like a fucking, it was a really expensive mold, fucking 16 K or something, 12 K oh, really, it's still like diving in. And you, that means you have to sell. They're not that expensive. They're only like 15, 20 bucks. That means you right. have to sell. Oh load. my God. You know, yeah. Yeah. To, uh, overcome your, your yeah, just to product. make up for that. Yeah. And yeah, he trusted me with this crazy fucking idea I had that I'd had since I was like 17 and it ended up becoming like, Oh, here they are. Boom. Oh, yeah. yeah fire pedals. So these extra pins, there's like one, two, three in each corner. One, two, three. I pretty much, I did this pedal design as like a school project in marketing and design classes and shit for like a full year. Like my senior year of college, I did every single project I could that I could choose on this product and like developed the whole marketing campaign, everything for it. And fucking now it's like one of the top selling pedals in the world. Damn. So this has been like that pedal. The royalties from that pedal have been paying for my life since I was fucking graduating college. Whoa. That's sick. And then, yeah, it's fucking, yeah, it's been crazy. And like with that, after that, I was like, I'm not going to have anything else come out that I don't fucking design a good chunk, damn near everything, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to have input on every fucking part of it. Like I, I study shit and figure out what the best things are. I mean, that's like with my, with my Samari Dama, my new one, I have like the, engravings like giraffe print engravings on all like the edges of the cups to like grip for yes. like yeah. i tried to make the easiest kendama possible because yeah. that's like what i want i want people to fucking get into dama and fucking land shit you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i think dama should be a little bit bigger you know like if Dude. whenever i bring a school around people <laughs> land everything and they get into dama like this it's like Fuck, wouldn't it be great if everyone had like an in-between of a sumo and a normal dama? Like dude, oh, Tara yeah, made one yeah, yeah. Tara's made one for years, buddy. The LBB. Yeah. A little but, bit bigger, I mean, just like, what you said. I mean, like the standard though. You know what I mean? Like the standard that like everyone has in like maybe not everyone. Yeah, has, no, I, but, I feel you. But yeah. having but, it around to like get people their mm-hmm. first big cup or their first spike, like think about yeah. how big that could be, you know? Um that is yeah. one of the funny things about Kendama is that it's like one of the more harder things to get into because it's like got a little bit of a steep fucking learning curve right that initial bit you the have initial, to kind of yeah, put yeah. in a little bit of effort to really understand like just how to cushion that and like yeah. these days they make like beginner like 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 the grasshopper kendama or like the like whatever you want to call it for like the young like people or people who are just the starting Ozora out ones, so that, there's that the ozora ones too yeah, yeah they have like a small like the smaller ball that fits in these massive cups yeah, yeah, yeah and it's like it's trash to do anything on but cup tricks but like if you're just doing basic shit then it's like it's perfect because it's just like it's made for making that super easy and just like getting that initial dose of that like 
you know, like, Oh, I can do this. Like, yeah. fuck yeah. And then, yeah. And that's all it takes is a couple, couple doses of that. And then you're fucking on it. Dude, <laughs> yeah. I, I've sat with people for fucking 30 minutes to an hour. Try oh, a big cup and spin yeah. spike dog. Wow. I have fucking done it, dude. Oh, yeah. I've, I've taught probably 500 to a thousand, maybe more than a thousand people fucking how to <laughs> big cup or spike. So I'm at a party. I'll do fucking 10 in a row. You know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, I yeah. struggle through this shit because that's kind of like where I'm, that's what I do for sweets. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. and fuck thinking about better ways. That's why, I mean, that's, you're talking about design. That's why I made my Kanama the easiest to fucking play. You know, yeah. there was some, yeah. I forgot who did it. Who does the Dama reviews? Like, you know, where they, oh, they measure oh, everything. Yeah. There's, there's a, a few, few now, actually, because yeah. there's the, uh, there's the Kanama Ken, media. Yeah. There's Ken Colt. Like home media TJ. does that shit. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think, TJ I, think too, yeah. I think it was home media that did it. They did like yeah. a full write up on my Dama and like rated the easiness of play and all this shit. Oh, and it was okay, all okay. like literally like it was the biggest pat on my back I've had with Dama design. I was like, oh my nice. god, like <laughs> yes, like it fucking works for other people as it worked for me because this the Moonlight Safari Dama like took fucking a year of prototypes. Wow. It was not. I was not allowing. It just, it had to be perfect. You know what I mean? And fucking, yeah, yeah. it took a long ass time with Morocco and I going back and forth and back and forth. Like, well, I think like maybe three rounds of prototypes, which are expensive as fuck. But I was like, yeah. we're not there, you know? And eventually <laughs> out there and fucking, I don't know. That's yeah. sick. Yeah. You put in the work. It's right, like right. It grows, comes right back around to what we were talking about. The passion of just like, you know, I like you could have put out the first version and been making royalties off the first one, you know, if that was yeah, what you wanted yeah. to do, but you fucking stuck it out and like, no, it's not perfect. This is not my vision. It's not what I wanted. And you fucking took the time. You even put in the money to do it. Same with your pedals. Like you're saying, like you, like that's that, like that alone shows passion. Like that's fucking sick. Episode 40 of Dominer. It's the passion episode with Reed star. Yes. An episode (laughs) of passion. Yes. Yo, fucking. I mean, that's like, man, I fucking, I think I, maybe I haven't told this interview. I fucking rolled my car when I was like, 16 and like oh, almost killed my parents and shit mm. and I almost died myself. We rolled like seven times and somehow everyone was all right. And ever since then, like life has just kind of been a fucking every day is a cake. And if I do mm-hmm. anything, it's the cherry on top, you know? And yeah, through all that, all I always come back to is why I'm so crazy and everything is just fucking passion, dude. I like, there's no reason for me to be alive other than fucking be passionate about everything I do and love it and grow it and fucking be a part of it and have a community with it and have fucking love and trust around me and fucking, I, I found it with Kendama and I found it with BMX and, you know, rock climbing too. fucking, you know, mm-hmm. there's these little things in the world that people can do and fucking find this dope fucking shit. That's you can't even describe it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, it's beautiful. I would almost have to say that it also has a lot to do with the specific personality. And this, you know, in your case, it seems like this one event kind of helped you have that be more of a focal point in your thinking and your lifestyle. Dude, people ask me, they're like, how the fuck are you so happy? And I always think to that, like, that's the first thing, you know, and like, yeah. that really was a changing point in my life. And like, man, maybe I could go through it and fucking... Like, dude, we rolled seven times. My dad was laying down in the back unbuckled in Nebraska. Fucking the only window that didn't break was near his head. He, like, didn't fly out of the car. Rolling seven sure. times, going, like, 70 on the highway. Like, somehow everyone's all right. Like, family of five that night, fucking 10 miles down the road, rolled the same thing, and fucking they all died. So, like, Damn, dude. I just, like, after this, I was, like, getting, like, I've never been religious. I was, like, fuck, like, am I, like, religious? Was this God? Like, am I supposed to be <laughs> here, you know? And then I was kind of, like, fuck it, like fucking life send it you know like you shouldn't even really be here dude like this is dude, all extra credit like just enjoy <laughs> every moment if you're not enjoying something change it fucking you know and oh, all that's so that crazy man all that passion and shit and that's yeah. kind of why i'm here but not everyone can have that experience right no, so right. not everyone's gonna have that experience which is fucked up because i can't say hey have a fucking terrible experience it's like Right. No, that's, Bro, that's they a have, part. Have family troubles, you know, like my family's great. Thank fuck. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a big reason of why I'm the way I am, you know, yeah. why the yeah. best, you know, but beyond that fucking, I don't know. Like you can't tell someone to have a bad experience. Well, so, I mean, everybody's, I everybody has their own path and their own journey of their, what their version of the bad experiences or whatever life is teaching them with. Right. I mean, it's yeah. like actually really crazy that you bring that you're saying this because I had a very similar experience and I was about the same age. Mm-hmm. I was in high school. And a friend of mine, I was hanging out with him, playing some music, whatever, and hanging out. And he was driving me home. 
And I was living in Edmonton at the time, which is like Northern Alberta. It's pretty cold. It was winter time. It was icy. And we we're driving. I'm looking out the passenger window and same thing. We just fucking all of a sudden we went sideways and hit a fucking little tree up on the side, hopped the curb and we started flip. I don't know how many times Shit. we flipped, landed upside down on top of a telephone pole, knocked the telephone pole over. And like those things are or not a telephone pole, sorry, a light post. Like they had li- a light at the top. Yeah. And those things have like a fail a fail safe in them that if they get broken and knocked over, then they're supposed to turn off so that the electricity yeah. stops running to it. That didn't happen with this one. It was still on, and our car was upside down spinning on top of it. I wasn't wearing a seatbelt, and like I came out of that, I crawled out of my window, my shattered window, covered in glass. I had some bumps on my head, Shit. and like a bump on my knee. That's it. I was fine. It's completely fine. Same with my buddy who was driving me. He had like a cut on his face. That was the worst of all of it. Car was fucked. But like, same thing, man. Like from that moment, it's like, I don't like often reflect on it, but when I do, it's always like a, wow. Yeah. That's like a powerful reminder of like, you know, like enjoying life and like really like enjoying this moment and just being like thankful and being like, yo, like maybe I'm not supposed to be here. Maybe I am. I don't fucking know, but. Dude, well, that was some def- crazy shit. You definitely shit. are. You definitely are. You know what I, I mean? Am. Like, there's no I, way you're re- not supposed to be here. Like, for yeah, but sure you are. Like, but regardless, man, I'm here. So, like, I might as well <laughs> fucking and make the best of it, whether I'm supposed to or not. Like, whether I escaped the devil or fucking God saved me or however you want to fucking put it. Yeah. Maybe I'm just lucky. I have a horseshoe up my ass. Who knows? Dude, dude, but it like, is, it is a, sh- a whole lot of life is a whole lot of fucking luck. If you do have like good energy and good intentions and you don't fuck people over, you're going to eventually tell those stories and be around more and more people who have those same thoughts. And you'll be able to kind of weave your way through life and connections and figure out the right path of where you're surrounded by fucking love and community and trust and shit. You know, like some of the most important things that people should be living with every day, you know, sucks Mm -hmm. to fucking live in fear. I've lived uh, like you scared stiff is a fucking crazy, crazy thought that it's like, yeah, mm-hmm. people are scared stiff. So do I. I get scared all the time, but you got to fucking conquer that fear and fucking move from it, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> but I guess I can't stiff. believe we were both in rollover accidents like that. It's actually kind of fucked up. Dude, that shit's that shit's crazy, dog. Cars yeah. kind of dude, and that's man, you can anyone, anyone can go out any day, dude. You mm-hmm. get on the highway, you can go out any fucking day. Man, okay, without even the friend, highway, man. Like everyone you know can go out any day. And if mm-hmm. you don't know that anyone can go out fucking any day and you're not thinking about that, you should start thinking about that. Cause that that's another fucking wave changer, you know, where your brain all of yeah, a sudden man. like, damn dog, like I really do have to be happy. Like I really right. Carpe diem. I really do have to fucking kill it every fucking yep. day. Like I have yeah, to live man. every day like it's my last. Like not to the extent that you're like going crazy and sending it over what you can do because you know you definitely got to believe that there is going to next be a next day. But yeah, you got to have faith have in tomorrow, talk, but be ready for there not to be one. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Plan for both. Mm-hmm. Be in the center at the same time. You know. <laughs> be at both or be at the center. Think about both. Be at the center of it. Yeah. Fuck. Dude, dude, and, and think about how Kendama <laughs> embodies all this shit. Like, that's like my brain. This is how my brain okay. works, dog. And whether it was Kendama that taught me it or vice versa, you know what I mean? How I connected to Kendama because I already had it. Like, yeah, Kendama is all pure balance, pure connection, pure flow. Like, just like, just dealing with your own, I got goosebumps right now, dog. Like, your own <laughs> yeah. anger, your own fucking hate, dude. He's a fucking wood because you can't grind this fucking trick any longer. Yeah. Yeah. And, he's late, and then you're like, I could do anything. And no one can tell you shit, dude. It's a fucking yeah. wave changer. Like, it literally makes fucking people, <laughs> dude, it makes people warriors, bro. I think it may be a fucking stronger human being mentally, physically, everything. Like, I fuck, and that's why I work so hard to fucking bring this shit to the whole, the furthest edge of the world, you know? It has never Damn. seen this shit. I really want Kandamas to be everywhere in the world. It's like a huge mission of mine in life. Like, fuck yeah. <laughs> I know that, read you, uh, there was an interview that I read of, of yours, and they're asking if you, how long you usually spend on filming uh, a trick. And you're saying like usually 10 times or less, if you don't feel it, then just keep on moving on. Don't let it ruin your day. Do you feel the same way about Kendama? Are you a grinder or are you just like, ah, maybe it's not today. So whatever, let's try a new trick. Kendama is like all the things that I'm bad at in BMX. So like Kendama is like bar spins, which I don't fucking do. Yeah. (laughs) I can flip. 
Tail whips, kind of like a fucking turntable. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's rather than going as fast as you can and gripping tighter, you have to breathe and grip lighter and fucking like fully hone in to land anything. That's why I suck so bad on stage at Kendama. Like in BMX, I can just white knuckle it and rip through a run. Mm. Like Kendama, dude, I like, I'm so bad at this shit dog. Like I, it's all the, it's pure patience. It's pure focus. It's getting completely out of your head. It's a form of meditation. It's yeah. mm-hmm. It's a struggle, man. And I, when I film, I fucking go through crazy mental shit because I do have to grind for like a hundred times, sometimes two hundred times. You know, days, days, days. Like, oh, yeah. fuck. Like, kendama grind is a whole new thing for me that like other people do in BMX. And a long time ago in BMX, I was like, fuck that shit. I'm gonna yeah. do all the fun shit. Like, I just like <laughs> rip and like hop into banks and like ride like ride the world like a wave. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, <laughs> Everyone else is like, oh, I got to do a 180 bar spin, 180 bar spin, bar spin. Like they're like, like how I play Kendama, you know, but I like okay. it with Kendama, but not with BMX. Interesting. <laughs> it's yeah. Like the Kendama tricks have made me want to learn BMX tricks, like tail ups and bar spins and shit. I'm oh, like, same thing. But I haven't really gotten around to a few oh, of shit. Yet. So. Oof. Dude, that <laughs> that's just, cool. yeah, it is so really cool. And just the, the balance of it and how each aspect of, you know your, your life and these hobbies that you have can interact with one another with a little give and take and then one is actually birthing a new idea into the other one mm-hmm. have you ever had that idea when you were uh playing all that broom ball back in college oh man not really <laughs> dude broom ball is fucked it is a big balancing but i got fucked up i dislocated my shoulder super bad in broom ball oh, maybe gosh. one of my first times i did it I think what happened broom- Slip right Dude, on the on the just, broom or on like, the ball. It's like boot hockey and just fucking full charge. I played hockey for like 11, 12 years. And when you play broom ball, like I'm trying to play it like I play hockey, but you just <laughs> slip all around. <laughs> and fucking, yeah, like looped out and just <laughs> like dislocated my shoulder. Man, I don't think it was the first time, but it was another really bad time that it happened. I've done both of mine like, dude, probably like 25, 50 times. Fuck shoulders. It. Yeah, like just yeah. Like, I got I got one bad shoulder. I feel you on that. It pops out pretty easy in the, these days. Yeah, I've, I've lately actually for the last couple of years I've been good because I did hella PT to like build muscles around it to hold everything. Nice. Kind of like what I'm doing for my knee right now. Um, Hell yeah. But yeah, fucking yeah, it's it was gnarly. So yeah, I fuck, I don't know where the fuck did you read that? Where did you read that I was playing brew ball in college? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's everything on the internet nowadays, you know, with all SMS. Can you, like, go deep in my Instagram or something like that? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go about, you know, of course, we're talking about all the differences and uh, similarities with BMX and Kendama. And that's something, you know, I don't know if you get tired of, but it's definitely a big feature of yours that not everyone has. So I want to continue on that topic of sponsorship differences like is there anything that you feel because you know bmx has been around for a lot longer than kendama has so kendama is still on the grow is there anything that you think as a sponsored player that bmx does that maybe kendama should do or incorporate um i would say the the team trip you know the van life team trip is huge Fucking yeah. getting, I mean, getting everyone like, together, getting everyone together, getting everyone to meet each other, yeah, getting everyone on the same vibe. Fucking, I think that's huge. Um, that's like a big skate BMX vibe, right? Uh, like going on tours, I think, is a big, yeah, skate. BMX. Yeah, it's huge, it's like, man. It's huge. It does everything good for everyone, you know. It's yeah. like that'd be the sickest thing to do as well. I, I always say, fucking freaking Dama, it's finding the you know, I guess this isn't much of a sponsor thing, but for players who are sponsored, finding a dope place to film. Like you look at fucking Colin Islop and he's like always going to somewhere dope in nature to film a clip and it looks really dope. He like makes Kendama look brilliant, you know, like yeah, frame yeah. right with the right fucking camera, like, you know, dope fit fucking just like, <laughs> I don't know. He's like, it's just being steezy with it is like a huge part of BMX, you know, like having fucking style and shit like that. And that's like really valued. I'd say grain theory is one of the biggest companies that values style, you know, mm-hmm, like yeah. grain theory really like they fucking, their team is just stacked with dope steezy motherfuckers. And you're like, damn, like they like get the way to work like two bears and shit. Fucking dude. Steez is impeccable. You know, like the yeah, couple yeah. of renowned, like, yeah. Well, recently um, two bears stepped down, but 
Definitely I was going to say. Yeah. 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 Oh man. I didn't even know. Yeah, yeah, it was really recently, like in the last couple of weeks. Actually. Well, yeah. fuck it. He doesn't even do sponsored for me to shout him out. He's fucking no, awesome. Yeah, he like, supported up. him for a while, fucking. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Just but like still, yeah, yeah. They have they have a lockdown on the kind of brand or the image that they want to put forward that includes, you know, their their product and stuff. So it's yeah. very strong and everyone sees that. Yeah. And other than that, I wouldn't say there's really too many differences. You know what I mean? I like, you know, you're, you're a sponsored player or something. You get fucking free product. You fucking support them. You film videos for them. They send right. you on trips. You know what I mean? Like if they're like a fucking premier sponsor, you get you get money from them, you know, maybe from products, maybe like a monthly salary. You know, that's like a typical setup type of thing. Right, right, right. Uh, depending on the company you're on, you know, some like really big companies like fucking fans or Red Bull or fucking. Oh, yeah monster yeah. or something those companies maybe i don't think they do any they have like you know training camps for like health shit which is great you know what i mean like they support they support their athletes with like support like that which with kendama isn't really that necessary i'd say but at the same time i don't know having having set retreats and shit for companies with teams you know like that's cool yes you know what i mean like going these these trips that bmx and skate crews go on i haven't really seen that too much i know people do it in kendama but that is probably the main thing that i'm like that's yeah that'd be sick to for people to do i know they do it you know kwc people talk about is the best experience ever yeah going for a week and cruising around that's that's what i'm saying but that's dude, what i was gonna say yeah, is yeah. Know, most every, people in kendama every, it's more like that yeah dude, every fucking trip you go on if there's a competition go for an extra week and fucking take a van out and go mob yeah. the sites yeah. and fucking go do shit, vibe yeah. as a team and talk about dama talk about growing dama you know like bro this shit is so small at this point we're all in this together and like it's gonna take all of us to fucking make this shit. Lift, you feel lift me? It like, up. Yeah, bring it yeah. to the next level. Yeah, it's that like is, yeah, it ain't just one company, dog. We all together, dog. Like really, like hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, and that's the thing that it, I think is really good with BMX skating, rollerblading, and stuff like the fun of going to a new place, a new country, a new city, new location to find a spot and then skate it, film there. And then continue going where like Kendama is like, it, it doesn't seem as easy. Yeah. You know, you, you, you got to do something like the Ken garden tour tour, Roots or, tour. or even like but hit up like a bunch of right? clubs. Oh, that'd be a good idea. Hit up a bunch of like teams and clubs that have like weekly get togethers and then just like have the team up into each one. Yeah. Go into each one. Like really like, I think almost like what they did with, uh, with Hawaii back in like 2014 or Romania, yeah. like where was last one? Estonia? No, it wasn't Estonia. What was it? Latvia. Latvia. I was gonna say Lithuania. Latvia. <laughs> <laughs> How they just yeah. went just to like stoke all the people, all the kids on it to keep it growing. Like yeah. maybe that can happen, like even in places where it's like still like, hey, maybe Tara should go do a UK tour. Fucking Scotland, England. Dude, I fucking tell me about it. I've wanted that since day one, man. right? Right. <laughs> so there you Dude, go. Yeah. But it's right fucking, now, yeah, no, it takes a, it takes a lot to get there. You know, uh, absolutely, definitely a lot of fucking money. And in the beginning of anything, you sometimes you put in your own fucking money. I've most certainly put in my own money to be involved. Oh yeah, in I'm a shit. Me yeah. too. Yeah. Right. So like traveling and stuff. Uh, how was Reed? Your your first time in Japan was for catch and flow. Was it not? Uh, no, it was uh, G-Shock Real Toughness, which is where oh. I met Hans and Rolf. I was going to say, yeah. Was there, okay. was okay. I got put yeah. out there for this BMX contest. It was kind of like a, not really, it was a BMX contest, but it was like a demo. You know what I mean? Yo, that it was, was like fucking a, gnarly. Was, it, was, was, it was in Tokyo Dome. Was that where I, I just remember the clip of someone going like up to the judge booth? To do a yeah. fucking stall, right? Yeah, I tried to foot jam fucking... Was that you? Yeah, RBMX. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it was someone. <laughs> that was fucking you? Dude, yeah, it was like, oh, that was so bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, you slipped out. You missed the, the footing. <laughs> so bad. I landed it after, but yeah, that was gnarly, man. They yelled at me. <laughs> But yeah, I was at Tokyo Dome. It was crazy. There was drones flying and fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. We were riding like in like a rave. There was like fucking strobe lights and all this crazy shit. And we were like competing. I was like, okay, like crazy little course. So there's like Kendama, BMX, skateboarding. Yeah. 
Drone. Maybe a, a DJ battle. But so that's when you first met some kids on plays. You were on, you were with, you hanging out with Sweets at that time? On the vibe? Yes, I believe so. I think I had a Sweets. I don't think I had a signature. Right. And yeah, I don't think I had a signature and I was there. I was playing with the homegrown, I think I remember. <laughs> um, and I was there and fucking, yeah, it was just with them. And we went and went to some shrines and we partied and fucking nice. got down and yeah, linked up and we're jamming Dama and it was sick. So I met those dudes way back when. Super okay. Sick. Okay. So that happened then. And then you came back for catch and flow last year. Was that last year? That okay. was two years ago. Two years ago. It was, it was two, two catch and flows ago. Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, you came the yeah. same year as Adam came too. Yes. Yeah, we were all mobbing around right. with fucking Akihabara won. together and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the year Bonds won, yeah. Right, right, right. So and one, it, one of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how, how did you feel about that whole, that competition? Oh, it was love? amazing. It was the best. <laughs> I can't believe I competed, dog. I actually got to kill it. I was like, yeah, you did. Last. Yeah, you did. Not no. last for like a while. I think there was like 16 or some people who went and I was still not in last. Like I was up there. That shit was crazy, dog. I fucking, I think I went second because I was like a late register. I was like, yo, like I flew all the way there and I like, pretty sure I didn't, maybe I didn't register. I probably was just like, oh, it's sorted. Cause oh, with a BMX sponsorship, you know, like usually it's like, oh yeah, you'll, you'll be sorted. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you yeah, your yeah. Best, you like your fucking hotel, everything's yeah. all sorted. And it was most of that, but I definitely was not signed up for the shit. You know, it slipped because I think I was a late addition. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, they sent me up there and I was so fucking nervous. And, uh, dude, I, I, yeah, I, I, I slayed. I'm pretty sure I slayed. Felt yeah, like you it. did. I remember I remember fucking seeing you up there. I was like, oh fuck yeah, Reed. You did like one of those trick, like kick juggle fucking Yeah, things. first trick oh. was I threw first trick was uh juggle, kick, big cup, and then spike. And I fucking landed that and I was like, dude, I just gotta do this. I just gotta do this. I just gotta do this. And I did that first go, and I was like, oh I'm over. I landed a whirly, I think, first try. I tried yeah. to do a bird a bunch, but it was like shaking. But yeah, yeah, I, think yeah. I, I definitely got a decent amount of spikes. It was it was really fun. It was super nerve-wracking. Fucking yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Competing in Kendama is so humbling. It's like just the best experience for me. Like, yeah, dude, yeah. Feeling like, I don't know, I try so hard and I like, <gasps> I like <laughs> want to do well and then it's like, dude. can't do well. But I like, it's okay. It's okay. Cause failing's great. You know, I Absolutely. Really love failing. Like, there's something Kendama about is, shit that I'm into. Like, yeah, man. Kendama is one of the only sports in the world that you can like go watch the top level play and watch the person like fuck up for a good like 30 seconds and be like oh but this is still like the ch- the top level play yeah. <laughs> you know we're all human. it's kind of it's kind of crazy and like the stage like you said it's very humbling man like it can be so nerve-wracking where you're shaking and shit and you just don't know what the fuck you're doing and like you can't even think of a kendama trick never mind right. do one yeah yeah you're just or, continuing to do the same trick over and over you're like wait fuck yeah it, or you can be in the fucking zone where you're just in it and you just do whatever you fucking throw just all of a sudden spikes and you're like what the fuck was that that was sick hell <laughs> yeah. yeah i've never done that before <laughs> what up like and everybody's hyped and you're hyped and you just yeah. ride the fucking hype train right True. It really can go either way and it can change at any fucking moment. <laughs> the best shit, dog. That's the best shit. Yeah, I'm but when you're when you're you, when you're riding that oh, wave, man. holy it's so good. shit, there ain't nothing better. Best uh-huh. wave. When you're just in the flow and just like you just are getting your tricks no matter what. Like, oh. All right, Reed, we've been jamming for a while. Now uh I'd like to bring in our questions for everyone who supports us on Patreon. Uh we let people ask a question to our our guests they get priority questions priority, definitely so we can ask questions, questions on instagram every once in a while but, but patreon while. gets priority oh yeah oh yeah so we got a few good questions so let's dive into them nick doddenhoff asks oh this is a big one i spent a week in ecuador last year and didn't expect to see anyone playing kendama turns out there were a few shout out andy from Ota- otavalo and it was because of you being there a few months earlier, and I was able to get a jam in in uh, Quito. Quito, yeah. Quito, there you go. What, yeah, what, dude. what do you think is the next step for South American kendama scene? And do you see yourself coming back to encourage a wave of Latin kendama players coming up? Definitely, dude. Fucking, I've been to Colombia and Ecuador. Ecuador was insane. Colombia was also insane. Sweet Kendama's Colombia just started out. Um, you can hit them on Instagram, Sweet Skin oh, yeah. Ecuador, Sweet Skin EC. 
So I was there and met this dude, Andres, and he was the most legendary fucking dude. And yeah, Andres Pesbino, he just, he's a BMX rider, been riding there forever. Showed him Dama. He loved it, like really loved it. I gave him one and I was like, dude, you should fucking be our dude down there. And he fucking, he's just been killing it, man. He's brought it, brought it to every single event there, like really made it something special. Nice. Hell yeah. Right. Okay. Next Good. question. Uh, from Max Ida, are there any groups of people that you want to reach out to and spread Kendama? Maybe some subcultures that we haven't really touched on yet. Yeah. Maybe like who else? Yeah, but I don't really want to talk about it. Because I gotta try it first. I gotta try it first to see if it works. Yeah. If I don't try it first to see if it works, but it's it's definitely something to do with healing. Yeah. Healing from injury. I think that's the next step. It'd be really cool because um, Kendama definitely has a lot of physical therapy benefits. I already like a it. lot of injuries. So definitely mm-hmm. going to try and go down that. I've heard of people using it for like physical therapy multiple times, actually. People who have had like knee, not necessarily like, you know, like going ham on a trick where you're like going full like knees. Of course, that's not good for your knees, but <laughs> but like little movements, you know, like that's good for like recuperation and shit like that. And that's, mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it's just a it's just a really cool way that I like didn't really know of that someone brought to my attention and I was like, damn, like that'd be really cool to fucking yeah. help people out with this, you know? Yeah. Like I even like I it'd be great if they could do this and have fun because I've done PT a lot and it sucks ass, mm-hmm. dude. So like if you could do PT and make it a if, little more like, fun. Kind of, yeah, kind of fun. Like I did stuff yeah. running for my fucking knee. I highly recommend that. Kind Hell of yeah. dangerous, but you gotta start low and but yeah, that was a way for me to like work on my like building my knee muscles because I, dude, working out sucks, dude. I mean, I've been super into it in the past, but I usually like rock climbing for working out, but all the gyms are like kind of closed right now. Yeah. Um. So like, yeah, it's it's hard to get motivated with that shit. So if there's like yeah. a way to bring that through Kendama to people, I think that'd be a sick next move for the industry, man. Absolutely. Everyone. You I mean, know, I, I, come on, let's bring that shit worldwide. Every company, let go. Hell yeah. <laughs> Man, I even go, like, I'll use the Kendama ball and, like, kind of lay on it, like a fucking, like, <laughs> medicine ball, like a, and, like, kind of roll Dude, out. Dude, I do, I do that same thing. I do Especially that. Especially, like, like, your feet and shit. My roommate keeps one on the floor sometimes. They'll just sit there on the couch. Even <laughs> no, bro, I have, I have multiple balls that I fucking keep, or Tamas, that are, like, not attached to Kendamas. To Ken's and fucking, I have them yeah. to like lay on and like hit pressure points and fuck. yeah, I do that when I'm traveling, dude. That because I'm not me too, dude. Bring yeah. a lot of shit. So no, and you always have a dama, so it's like yeah, dude. I've, that's tr- I've so tried fun. using you're the, the Ken. You're the only person who's ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to use the can like you just take the can apart and like roll on the cerdo and like, oh, yeah. spike separately no way. but it doesn't work as well if there's a string like if there's no string it's stringless it works Dude, it's I'm just about, like kind of weird I'm about to take apart a dama right yeah buddy get your get your, get your roll that, on that would roll like right along your spine so it yeah like, it would like ooh. kind of like like harnessing your if you use a sumo yeah yeah definitely with a sumo yeah there <laughs> you go there's even different levels to it holy yeah uh, well, definitely the ter- <laughs> the terra pill fits that package perfectly, just on oh, feet. Yeah, just- until it comes apart, and then if you're rolling on your back and it came apart, that would kind of you get spike in the the edges. Maybe I've never tried it. Maybe I'll try. It. I'm a- you gotta glue I'm one together, it. dog. Ooh, sacrifice! Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> I mean, is it a sacrifice if it's leading to like better dama play? Like it's true. It's, I, yeah, all right, you're you're convincing me more and more. <laughs> the second read. <laughs> 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 there is there is um i know there's a a doctor who is into kendama here in japan and uh has connections with sue lab and so oh, yeah. helps him create a kendama specifically for people uh for kind of like physical therapy type of shit so oh, shit. and i like if you guys remember what was it for the online there was this one video that was shared like crazy of this old woman this japanese woman getting bird through Instagram. And she actually joined Kendama World Cup online. That just happened. Oh, she, think, was she the one? She was, was the like only the one that, oldest one? Yeah, the oldest one that got whatever, like, oldest Like above 89? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so sick. So that is definitely something that, you know, that uh, some people have been opening up for, you know, touching upon the elderly scene. Elderly scene! Yeah, fuck yeah. We're What's all up? getting there eventually. You can't fucking... <laughs> we'll, we will get there. Yeah. 
Dude, Slowly that, but surely. That's some crazy shit about is- Jam and Dama, dog. You'd be like, I'm like, damn, I'm really going to be playing this forever. Like, yeah, totally. I can <laughs> actually play it. this till I'm like 70, 80, you know? Like, unlike yeah. all the other shit I do where eventually I'll be yeah. like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not happening, you know? I could even sit down and jam Dama. Yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's right, always right. stacking damas, you know. That's ooh, oh. a beautiful part that is often overlooked in kendama. Right. I, haven't, I haven't done that much, dude. Oh, I'm a big fan. It's so far, hey, maybe I should try that out. There used to be crom stack competitions. I remember they had two of them: the crom oh. stack, crom stack two. I won both of them actually. Yeah, but, and then they stopped doing them. Like, you're man, just wait, so you're like the ultimate dama stacker. Come I'm on. not. I'm not claiming that, but like they, wait, never, they stopped two? doing them. You've won two competitions? Yeah, I did win two. <laughs> okay, I might have to talk to Swedes. We're going to have to do a Dama second competition. Oh, dude. please, fucking, please. Just to see yes. if Adama wins this shit. Come on. <laughs> oh, so if if he does, I'm not trying to I'm claim like, right. Stack Lord or anything. I'm not trying and, like, to claim you know, no. There's going to be no prize. It'll just be like, yo, show us your oh, Dama stack. Dude, oh. I'm into it. I'll fucking stack some Doms. Let's go. It's been a yeah. minute, actually. I've like talking about it, but I haven't stacked some doms in it. That's, that's definitely a big thing, like back in the day for the OG players to just sit down, hang out, and like just stack doms yeah, and man. post on like Facebook or some shit. Dude, I, I remember I, I never I think... been a part of this shit, dude. I've never <laughs> been a part. I mean, at the dinner table, I've started doing the you know the balance time. Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, I've done that shit, but I mean. I've never just had a whole Dama second session with the gang, like, and dude, I, I yeah. hung out with y'all, and you've never brought it up. So that's true. That's <laughs> very true. We haven't stacked. You're right. I'm sorry, buddy. It's my bad. Next time. Next time. Next exactly. time. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Next question. Holden S asks, "When can we expect a new Stark mod? Seems Boo Johnson might have a new color scheme. I was wondering if you've talked with Sweet." on another colorway for your mod big question big question and we can't say anything looks like oh, it, it looks like reed's frozen yeah is he actually oh, frozen? I'm just with y'all. yeah i thought so we're just gonna hold that freeze and be like, 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 like get him <laughs> away from the questions like oh. <laughs> just fucking scheming on an answer real quick like oh no the <laughs> nah, i got no answer yeah. <laughs> that was it that was it y'all <laughs> That was the answer. Um, <laughs> uh, and he also has a second question. Oh, okay. Uh, current topics. Uh, it must have been crazy being in Minneapolis for uh, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter movement, everything that has been going down and continues to happen. You just in, uh, We know that you, were, you posted a few clips on Instagram and stuff. You were going out. He asked, what was the craziest thing that you saw? So, dude, I'm like, I don't watch any new shit, right? I'm sitting here doing work, and all of a sudden, like, there's a helicopter over my house. And I'm like, yo, this is like some L.A. shit. It's in L.A., a lot of mornings you can wake up and there's a fucking helicopter over your house, which means if they're circling your house, that there's a fucking bandit, some motherfucker <laughs> who did some crazy shit, right? <laughs> like, hopping into your backyard soon. Lock the door, <laughs> motherfucker. You know what I mean? Probably don't go outside. Um... <laughs> Which you do all the time anyways, it's fucked. Uh, but so that's happening in Minnesota. And I'm like, well, this is this is very interesting. So I'm like, well, I gotta go check this shit out. And I hop on my bike and cruise down the road about eight blocks away, fucking there's a protest. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? And people fucking tell me all about the shit. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And I stay Whoa. there for like a couple hours, a truck pulls up, peaceful protests, like they're speaking all this shit. There's like cops, like, you know, out there chilling just kind of protecting the area whatever not doing much and i was like all right so there for a while and i was like yo i gotta it's a work day i gotta go do some shit pedal eight blocks back home work for like three four more hours look out again they're still there and i'm like what the fuck like no way and i'll like hop on my fucking bike and cruise over and like there's tear gas and smoke and insanity and i'm just like dude what the fuck and then all of a sudden i'm just fucking dude i'm in it dog i am in it like uh yeah watching fucking people get blasted watching people get shot the fuck up by police uh watching people gushing blood from their fucking face because of rubber bullets probably the craziest thing i experienced during the whole thing 
was like 150 feet out. I saw like a rubber bullet, like come, like, I think it hit my fucking hair. Like I like heard it that close right at my eye, but I saw it so far out and it was just zoom. And I was like, <gasps> and my homie next to me fucking I think it was Morocco. And he's just like, bro. And I was like, yo, do you fucking hear that dude? Like that went like, I almost got my fucking eye shot out type of thing. And it was fucking crazy. And That's I pretty much up. just like ran around and was just trying to help people. People were getting fucked up by police. I was just like, fuck this. This is so fucked. Like, what are you guys doing? Like people weren't doing shit and they just come up and be like, ah, fuck it. Ah, and like start blasting people, fucking girls, people sitting there chilling cross-legged, fucking grandmas, fucking. I was just running around trying to help people, man. It was the craziest thing of my whole fucking life. It was so disheartening and so sad. And I'm so just bummed with how the fucking police handled this shit. Yeah, it's really um, fucked up. It man. was fucked. Like it was I all the shit that happened from it. I just so happened to be living right next to it. And yeah, like, like I'm getting like I got like 5,000 Iraqi followers because they're like, you're part of our revolution. Like I'm getting shared on all these fucking revolution pages in Iraq and fucking Iran and all this shit. <laughs> Crazy. And I'm like going out and they're like, please, so many people are like, please, please, please just go document. Cause I'm like not out there fucking like saying shit. I'm just going to the shit and documenting what the fuck's going on. It's right next to my house and seeing what's happening, you know? And like, mm -hmm. but yeah, a lot of people who were very innocent got fucked over. You know, the world is now in a different state. Everything's different. And it just happened right next to me. I don't really know how I feel about it. I don't even feel struck. I'm so off the walls with this shit. It's so close to home that it's so hard to even fathom like what's happened because of it, you know? And like now with the election and all this shit and it's like every problem's always changing and it's so difficult to fucking comprehend. And like, not that it was a traumatic experience, but I definitely felt like I was at war for many nights in a row, you know, like, and then for weeks we had to stay up till fucking five, 6 AM and hold on the block. Every block we had to tape off the fucking block and stand guard and fucking, People coming by with no license plates, screaming shit, fucking white supremacists all over, like, you know, like mm -hmm. fucking tanks rolling down the street. You know, this That's is my life for like three, four weeks. Maroka's life, the graphic designer of Sweets, like Max May, fucking Chad, Sadie, like so many of everyone who works at Sweets, pretty much everyone was like in this shit, you know? Yeah. We're well, trying Minnesota to. Minnesota was like, absolutely the epicenter of all of it, right? Yeah. Like, everything near me is fucking burned down right now, dude. Like mm -hmm. everything is like either like shut down, abandoned, or burned down. Spray paint everywhere, homeless camps everywhere. Everyone's fucked. Everyone's homeless. Whole world's fucked. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it is crazy, man. Yeah, I'm literally yeah. I'm hopping in a van. I'm just like, <sighs> gotta go, gotta, gotta <laughs> get out. Of it, dude. Yeah, yeah. Dude. gotta yeah. blow God. Uh. This is fuck dude and yeah. i watched it all happen from the start i filmed the dude breaking the first auto zone which they came out and said fucking first it was the saint paul policeman then they're saying it was a fucking white supremacist but i filmed that fucking dude I, I was there that was the first glass broken that started everything you know what i mean i watched it all happen in front of my fucking face the crazy, crazy. Yeah, dude i'm I, one of my homies his like good friend was the girl who was at the shit who's a firefighter who's screaming at the cops saying in all the videos he can't breathe like that is not proper i'm a firefighter fucking please do not do this oh, please yeah, do not yeah. do this please stop please stop for fucking nine minutes screaming dude like that's like my homie like knows her dude and like she watched it all go down in front of her like imagine how close and then she watches the world like burn and get destroyed yeah, and looted like this like there yeah it's yeah it's and i was right there too it's just fucking weird man it's just like i never i don't know man not in america uh, yeah. I thought it happened it's just been a fucking really weird last like this year with dude. corona corona yeah. and this and you know like it's just mm -hmm. been really fucking crazy and i don't even know why i started talking about oh the george floyd question the question yeah, yeah. crazy as shit was almost getting my fucking eye shot out which have definitely ruined a whole lot of shit. I would have been all right, but yeah, that was pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah, man. Well, good on you for being down there and helping fucking your fellow man in need, dude. Dude, dude there, were respect fucking, for there, that. there were doctors and nurses who would get off work and be in full scrubs and they're running around and fucking picking people out of fucking pits where cops are throwing fucking smoking gas and shooting people and they're dragging people out and bringing them to like people converted their like coffee shops into medical areas for people to go like 
the community just boring. came together and just like had so much love, so much power, you know, like it's so fucking it was awesome. so amazing, you know, like, mm-hmm. yeah, it was the it's crazy. unfortunate to, that it has to be like under those circumstances, but like, that's fucking amazing to like hear and that people would fucking do that rather than freak out and like go against each other. You know, there's no, so no, everyone, dude, I was going to the fucking liquor store. I was going to the fucking, all these, we were going around my buddy across the street. He worked at a liquor store or he works at a liquor store and he would, the boss would give him a shitload of beers and we go around with the cooler all night and go to all the posts, like all up and down Lake street. There, there were also girls like with coffee, hot coffee from coffee shops going around, helping people out. You know, people are staying up literally all night. Cause so many like, it wasn't just how it started. It was when people realized that there was a crazy fucking riot in Minneapolis and yeah. now some waves of people are flying in or driving in to fuck shit up and steal yeah. everything. Yeah. And like everything, dude, I mean, around me, bro, everything got fucked. Like really bad, man. It's how, crazy. How is the whole situation now? Because it's been what, like two months? Around me, like every store has pretty much been robbed like two or three times in the last like month or so, just because they're like everywhere is still boarded up. Fucking shit's burned down. They're cleaning up all the burned down huge buildings and shit all along. Remind you, this is not everywhere in Minnesota. I live literally on Lake Street, which is like the epicenter. Like George Floyd yeah, still shit. like six blocks up, seven blocks up, I think on 36 at Cup Foods. And like all the riots and everything was like big chunk my shit, you know. Also on North yeah. Side, but like Lake Street all the way down. Everything that's like if easy asset access to me is like burnt, robbed, fucked, spray paint, destroyed. Like the whole city is. I mean, we're gonna rebuild and we're gonna rebuild strong and hopefully it's fucking better. You know what I mean? Like hell yeah. Um, I do believe that this will cause good things, you know, as fucked up as it sounds like maybe not Change, everywhere yeah. it happened, but people are aware of real problems. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Real fucking racial fucking inequality that 100%. has happened for a long time. People are unveiling fucking facts about zoning restrictions, red tape, yeah, all yeah. This crazy shit where fucking African-Americans and not white people and all of America have been fucked over ever since they were here, you know? Um, right. And now people are aware of this shit. And I think that just that awareness in itself will change things. And we will see and live in a more equal, fucking loving world, you know? Where people yeah, love everyone they're around, you know? And It's fucked yeah. up so many, like, there's so many old laws and rules that have been created, like, back in the day that just continue to stay there and no one's really like going up and touching upon them or looking back at them and be like, Oh fuck it. Maybe we should get rid of this. Maybe we should get rid of this like two finger string rule, you know, like <laughs> fucking in Japan, there's plenty of, I remember this one incident where um, at a sumo competition there, well, I don't know. Have I talked about this on the show before? There you was, might have. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Either, either way, it's a good story. Continue. Where Yeah. There, someone was having a heart attack forgot if it was another audience member or like the one of the officials during the match and who's on the actual stage where where the sumo wrestling happens and that stage is a sacred place there's a shrine directly above it and that's why they have like opening prayers before the the games start and back in the day like there's a whole shit against you know women aren't allowed in this area it's too sacred for women And when this person had their heart attack, the only person that around that could help them was uh, a doctor who was a woman and she jumped on, on there and was trying to help him. And people were like some old ass fucking shit up their ass. Officials were like, Hey, you can't come up here actually because you're a woman. It's old fucking, even though she's saving this man's life, old fucking rules that need to be like, taken down have just been you know sadly it's like this, rethought you know like yeah, just look, have like, a second look at it and really think yeah. about what the fuck you're talking about right, right. <laughs> is all it really takes you truly know? truly and it, it fucking out, sucks dude. that all this shit has to happen where people have to be losing their lives yeah for so many years and how it just like it flipped with with george floyd it, it, it hit a switch and 
it's sad that his life had to end like that but it's also good in the fact that like the world like all the news you know in japan was covering it yeah it, it, it ignited a whole fucking yeah. thing yeah yeah not only like just in america like because that's where the fuck it's the worst but all around the world it's opening up people's eyes into this this shitty system that has been in place for like way too long so bro bro this shit fucking dog there's racism everywhere dog in fucking in the uk and oh fucking, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Man, any place Pakistani really. people fucking chinese people hate japanese people vice versa yeah Philippi- yeah filipino people fucking hate chinese people bro there's yeah. so many fucking crazy judgmental things going on between mm-hmm. all this shit that's why safari states fuck borders bro all that fuck shit yeah. fuck you know what i mean those walls people build where they just like drown out whoever the fuck and whatever the fuck's going on with their own internal bullshit that's guided yeah. their life. And whether they were taught that by some dumbass who fucking barely learned to yeah. read by the age of their fucking 30, who, I don't know, some fucking farm hick or some shit and all of a yeah. sudden they're in the city, but their whole lineage led them to still being kind of a piece of shit and having yep. shitty fucking ideals. And it's like, yo, motherfucker, check your morals, check your shit. Like, we're in a new wave. Like, be open to everything. Fucking, yo, the world ain't looking good. <laughs> We're all here together. Yeah. We might fuck all die here together with how fucking bad we're ruining it with all this industrial bullshit. So, like, might as well have a good time, and not be a dickhead. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Fucking accept together. those around you. Let people do what the fuck they want to do. No one wants to get told what to do. That's why in mm-hmm. fucking the Netherlands and shit like that, fucking people are free. And yeah. there's like no crime and no crazy drug use because they're like, oh, here's all the drugs. Make yeah, them it's... all legal. Make them yeah. all legal. Let people choose. If you have all the information about it, you probably will choose the right thing. Most 100%. people will. Yeah. When you fucking make something a crime or make something a fucking problem and you're a bad person if you do it, Just... people get interested in it yeah. and then they do it. And then they lose yeah. their shit over it. And then they're punished for it in the wrong way. And then they fucking go to jail and their whole life is fucked. They can't get a job. They can't do shit. Mm-hmm. All this shit's fucked. In America, the fucking jails are privatized, dude. People are... Dude. So much, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a whole hole oh, of fuck, shit man. to get into. And, yeah, and for so real. all I really got to say is... Have a fucking good time. Just have fun. Boo Johnson. Shout out Boo fucking Johnson. Just oh, yeah. have fun, motherfucker. Come Be a good on. Person. Like, right, yeah. Be what humane. the fuck is like, have dude, fun. what are you? <laughs> California is burning, dude. Fucking there's, there's the black plague in California now. Fucking coronavirus is ruining the whole world. Fucking shit's shutting down. Everything's fucked. And you're still going to have some stupid ass judgmental shit that's going to bum you out because some stupid motherfucker <laughs> took in yeah. and out of your head. You can clear your shit For up. Real. Just be you. Love everyone. Mm-hmm. Fuck, am I a hippie? Maybe I am. I used to be like, ah, I <laughs> a hippie, flower but, up. Yeah. I don't know, yeah. man. I'm fucking, I'm, maybe I'm a harsh ass hippie. Fuck it. Like, I think you're just a loving individual, dude. And you just care about your fellow man. And if people want to put a label on it and like, because of the way you're talking about it, then that's on them. That's another fucking, yeah, that's like, whole, whatever, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. I'm doing that, And it that's what fun. this is all about. It's like, yeah, just fucking have your fun, do what you're trying to do, but like, don't hurt people. Like why, if you're trying to hurt other people, then what the fuck's the point? Like, yeah. dude, And and that's the thing about Amsterdam. That's why it works so well. Same thing with Germany. If you're not fucking with anyone else, you're okay. Like you can Mm -hmm. be tripping balls on the beach, dude. Yeah. Not fucking stealing shit or being a dickhead. And they're going to be left alone. Eat those mushrooms in exactly. public. It's fine. Yeah. You know, like, if anything, people are going to you know, be able to talk to people and be like, yo, I'm like way too high on mushrooms right now. And they'll know exactly what to do and help you. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and it, it's like open and transparent and transparency is like what I think is really key to life, man. Like yeah. if everyone was yeah. just transparent with everything, be honest, be true, fucking tell people your intentions. Don't be manipulative. You know, like, with business shit too, it's like, yo, like, I don't know. There's a lot of leveling up that could go down. Yeah, well, always, man. There's always room for improvement. And that's what life's about, right? It's just steady working towards that goal. The same as with the Kendama grind. You yeah. have that fucking goal of like that I- ideology of what you want to fucking be able to be. 
something you want to strive for, whether it's a swing spike or just being a good person. Yeah. Whatever. You just keep working at it. You never fucking give up. Episode 40, passion episode, everyone. We got one more question. It is the episode of passion. Hell yeah. <laughs> one last question. That, that makes me so proud. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, though. The passion episode, dude. <laughs> dude, I really, I really do love Kadav though, man. It's crazy. Yeah, you do. But it's so funny, man. People are just like, why? Because yeah. the first time I saw it, I was like, yo, this shit's so fucking whack. I was like, <laughs> why? <laughs> why? It was to be ordered from us. I was like, why are you two bozos playing with this fucking toy, dude? <laughs> You're wasting your fucking time. Oh, shit. And now my whole life is fucking revolved around it. Getting I people past that moment. Toy, yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Now I'm is. trying to fucking do it. Woo, I don't know, bro. Hell yeah. Fuck. Yeah, but that's good that you were there because you know how to help people <laughs> to get I was going to say. Moment. I yeah. know, and then, and, then, and then I was like fucking hitting myself. Like, dude, <laughs> oh, I'm so dumb. I always yeah. say that. Here it's like, God damn. I remember last year when I thought I knew what I, what I had like going on. I was like, that was stupid as shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This year, all right, now I think I kind of got it. Next year, I might be like, oh, Yeah, <laughs> totally, man. Oh, yeah. man. Is it gross? It's, it's, that is life right there. So, here we go. Last, <laughs> last question is from Haley Bischoff. She asked, What? what we got what? Bischoff. I was going to mention her earlier. We were talking about the girl down players. Hell I actually yeah. thought about that after. I was like, Dude, Bischoff is like the, I mean, she slays, though. She's Hell yeah, she's yeah. so good. But she also slays life. Like that new video she put out, you know what I'm saying? Like, dude, come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With yeah. Colin yeah. Sander. Didn't Colin Sander film it, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. Yeah, dude. I mean, that's legendary, bro. Like, mm-hmm. that is so. Mm. Yeah, shout out, Bish. Bish. Shout out. Shout out. Always. Thanks. The question Infinite is. Infinite love for the Bish. What is your hair care regimen? How do you keep them curls so perfect? Dude, I. Are they curls? They look like, well, at least right now, it looks just like really wavy. Well, I, I actually they just got my hair cut like professionally for the first or second time in my life. Second, <laughs> third time. Third time I've been to a salon. I went one time when I was 11 or 12, and then I um, went once like a year ago, and then this was my third time. Yeah, my mom's cut my hair my whole life. Hey, me too. My, my, my regimen, I recommend I don't. <laughs> put any product in it ever i don't wash it ever i only <laughs> run my hand. i run my fingers through it in the hot shower and like well and throughout the day sometimes i'll like do this you know like i'll like give it the finger it, comb just like finger comb so i do that around and um yeah not too much so but yeah i, I don't do anything to it ever just natural oils because your natural oils actually like take care of your hair shit you know with the fucking dreads yeah, um, I mean, like natural oils like take care of your hair like properly. It's just when you use when like the reason my hair is like this right now is because they fucking put some shit in it. They're like, oh, it's natural, and that shit's trash, bro. Fucking, <laughs> it like yeah, makes my shit not real. I don't know, mm. but uh, yeah, do nothing to it. <laughs> do <laughs> Hell nothing. yeah, dude. This has been such a good sesh. So it hyped has. to get in the the good, the full, the full read experience exactly rather than yeah. like the the we jam was good we had the little the little questionnaire you the question was awesome. rap master for yes. life yeah not that you weren't already but the official it, it, yeah it was officially <laughs> like you know fucking you got the stamp on there stamp of approval thank you for taking the time to get on here and talk some dama shit with us reed is always talk good some, to talk chat some real life shit we just like yeah yeah, yeah not even dama shit. episode there's dama in there but overall i mean dama's connected to everyone's hearts and our minds and shit and that's Mm -hmm. just what was this episode was all about transcending any other kind of hobby it's just like fucking be a good person love share it open arms Mm -hmm. dude and you gotta you gotta do that with your dama too man like never get mad at wood (laughs) don't get mad at wood What, what what is your take on uh spiking like 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 football kind of spike damas like after you like yeah, what, oh, what's your take on that, Reed? That's my favorite shit ever. I love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> ever. Ever. Oh, my God, dude. Spike that shit. Hope the ground's soft. Like, don't spike it in the concrete. But if you spike yeah. it in dirt, then you got to clean it off after, and you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we still get it. <laughs> we, just, we just lay, dude. Spike that shit. I love, yeah. I love throwing damas. Throwing damas is the best shit ever, dude. Hell, yeah.
<laughs> Shit. But yeah, completely. Yeah. Say, thank you so much for you taking your time out, uh, talking with us, going deep. Hopefully it was a good experience for you as it was for us. Hopefully everyone who is listening enjoyed it. Hopefully open your mind, uh, start to think about new things. Thank you all so much for always supporting. If you want to support even more, you can jump on our Patreon, Ken Entertainment Patreon page. You could, uh, you know, throw some some funds over to help me continue to create this this show with my buddy yeah. Rod over in Canada to, <laughs> to help with all the other Ken Entertainment videos I'm putting out. I've been just focusing on so much with Dominators because everyone seems to be enjoying that the most. But, uh, dude, there's that catch and flow fucking vlog that I still have to finish editing. I got like, it's like oh. a 15 minute video. But we video. watched it. We premiered it. it so was... we, we premiered it, but it's like there was much more that I have to cut in there. Oh, shit. So there's that like, was like extra, a preview. Yeah, that was like 15 minutes. There's like at least another like 12 minutes that I need to try to crop oh, damn. in. Oh, damn. Well, so it's going to work, buddy. I know. It's going to happen. There's a lot of shit. <laughs> but in any case, if you want to support there, that's the. That'd be fucking awesome. Huge love to everyone who supports. Yeah, much love uh, to the Patreon. Yeah, it's, it's oh, yeah. Go, so support, go support my boys, man. They putting on for Kandama. This shit and if fun. you want to just, you know, help out other people who are uh, have maybe questions about Kandama, who are getting into it, want to know a little history, a little background knowledge, mm-hmm. tell them to check out Dominators. Sure. Love it. Toss them the nerds link. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Hell yeah. Much love, everyone. MJ already said it all. Much love to everyone. You already know what's up. Yep. On that note, the nerds are out. out. Yeah. Ciao, y'all.